How do you work with a SQL Server in a .NET Aspire solution? Well, this is how. But there's a lot more to it, so let me explain. In this session, we'll introduce Azure SQL Database and how to use it with .NET Aspire. What is Azure SQL Database? That's a great question. Azure SQL Database is SQL Server that runs in the cloud. It is the PaaS solution for SQL Server with more than a quarter million active customers right now. That translates to nearly 10 million active databases and 70 trillion queries. 70 trillion queries a month is more like 27,000 simultaneous queries every millisecond. When it comes to capacity and the ability to deliver, Azure SQL Database is unbelievable. 61 petabytes of storage are currently in Azure SQL Database. That's around 25 million copies of Doom. Remember Doom from 1993? Well, let's start with the basics, right? So we have nothing going on and let's start introducing SQL Server the best way that we can. We'll start with SQL Server as a connection string. That means we don't actually introduce SQL Server because we already have SQL Server in our development environment. You're already running it on your local machine. You're already running it in a local container. You're already running it in a local network. Maybe you're even running it in Azure. Great. So now we can say SQL Server is actually represented as just the connection string. And because I'm saying add connection string, I can go into my secrets and I can make sure that SQL Server is there. It will pull it out and pass the reference to all my different applications that are hosted inside my solution. That's where a lot of developers are today. And this is actually where a lot of developers might start. But there's a lot of value when it comes to a repeatable, reliable, and prescriptive development environment. So let's talk about what Aspire can give us when it comes to SQL Server and Azure SQL Database. If you're wanting to add SQL Server, the easiest way is to just use dot add SQL Server and give it a name. When you do that, that's instructing Aspire to go and pull down the latest copy of SQL Server that runs in a container. SQL Server runs on Linux, and so it's a Linux container and it runs inside a container. It'll pull down the late latest for you and it'll name that container something along the lines of my dash server. And then you can say, let's add the database to it. So now I'm gonna add a database inside SQL Server. Remember, SQL Server is a container of multiple databases. This is indicating that the database you're gonna use is called my dash DB. What it builds for you then is the database at 12001 and then it puts it at some specific port, and then the initial catalog is going to be my-db. That's the syntax in the connection string. Now, what you need to know is that this doesn't create the database. It does create the server, but it expects that the database is going to be there, and it's going to be called my-db. That means if you run this command, go then to this server through some sort of management tool like SSMS, Visual Studio, Azure Data Studio, or whatever it is that you use, you'll find the server there, but you won't find the database. That's because add database is really an instruction at the Aspire level to create the initial connection string, and that's it. What happens then when I run that command? Well, it's beautiful, right? It creates two pieces inside the uh, dashboard, right? I see both the database and the server, and you can see the source then is the latest for SQL 2022. And if you go over to Docker, you can see that there is now a my-server that is running inside Docker, because that's the way Aspire works. And so it's nice to be able to see what's actually happening. But there's a lot more we can do than just this. Once we have the database running, now remember, the server is running. We don't have a database. We'll get to that in just a minute. But how would we use it if this is all we needed? Well, we can say add projects like you would add any project to Aspire. And then we can indicate with reference. And basically, with reference to SQL Server says, go and get my connection string. Now, service discovery inside Aspire then can go and get that from the environment. It'll automatically be set. You could read it, I suppose, in the raw, but you can also use service discovery. That's nice. Another thing you might do is you might say in the development environment, it's one way, but in the production environment, it's another. So you could use is publish mode. In publish mode allows me to have a Boolean. This is a, a ternary operator where I say, if it is publish mode, then go ahead and use just the connection string. And then if we, I'm in my uh, development environment, you can see it's just builder.addserver add database like we had before. So now you can have multiple types of operations depending on the environment that this is running in. Now you might write something far more sophisticated than I have here in just this slide, but it's nice to know that you can switch your operations depending on the production state. I've already got 
the basics kind of behind me. Let's go through some more advanced features and let's step through them one by one together. And let's begin with how we get that data into SQL Server. With bind mount allows me to take an external folder or file and map it inside my container. So with bind mount in this case says I'm going to a local folder called dot slash script. So this would be a subfolder of the app host. If I'm running this in the app host, of course I am. And then the target then is user slash config. That's a known location inside the container that I'm going to. And then I can, again, do another bind mount for slash SQL. That's where the SQL scripts will be housed to, that are going to run at the beginning to create my schema, create any kind of seed data or anything like that as well. This is where it's going to go into the target. And then finally, I will update the entry point to point to a shell script that I'm going to use. So this is nice. It's a lot of steps, right? It's one, two, three things I get to add as well as provide the script and provide the SQL. But now I have the ability to create that database and create the seed data that I might want for my development environment. Beautiful. Now, what if every time I debug, I don't want to run that again and again. I want to, I want to have it so that the operations that I'm doing stay inside my database. I want persistence across debug sessions. So I can say with data volume, and if I go back to, to Docker desktop, I can see that calling it my data volume just creates a data volume inside Docker for me and then mounts that automatically into my container. That's beautiful because that data volume then is going to hold all of the database master files and log files so that everything is stored and persistent across my debug sessions. That's nice. All right, what else can I do? Well, another thing I can do is I can say, when you create that database, use this password. And the reason I might do that is because I might have tooling that points to the database and expects the container, if it's running, to just be accessible. So I have a persistent known SA password. That's really nice. And then the way this works inside Aspire is I just use manage user secrets in the app host, and then I can start editing that JSON file. Now, I want to point out that at the top is the parameters called SQL Server Password, just like we said. And I have P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D as my default persistent SA password, right? That's really nice. But what's this line below it? The line below it is the my server password that was created before I did this right? Because I called it my server. And so the server already had an SA, it needed a password, it generated it, and it stored it here. So the truth is, I have a persistent password, it just wasn't a known password. So I could use the syntax that I showed a second ago, or I could come in here and just change the auto-generated password to one that I prefer. It's really up to you. And then we just pass it in when we add the server. But there's something else that we can do, we can also influence the port. Influencing the port makes it even easier for me to go in and interact with it from tooling. So now SSMS, ADS, or whatever it is you're using to interact with SQL Server knows the name of the server, which is just local, and then it knows the port that it's going to, it knows the password, and it knows the database name. So now it's nice and easy for you to work with it both programmatically inside your code as well as using some database tooling. That part's really nice and almost an important thing to maintain your sanity. So now, Back to the dashboard for Aspire, you can see it's running, and you can see on the right that the endpoint says it's running on TCP localhost, which is what you expect, and that 1234 is the port. The next thing to do is maybe you're building this out as a container, you want all of these features to be there, but when you're done, all you really want to do is publish it just as a connection string. So that's really nice for me to be able to be able to look at this and say, I'm going to dial down a little bit of the complexity when it comes to publish time. The next thing to consider now, some of the things that we're going to see very soon in version 9, especially things that are relevant to SQL Server. So let me just start with one of the biggest and most important one is going to be publish as Azure SQL database. Take the configuration inside Aspire and hand that off to Azure to create the Azure database that we want. Now, this doesn't exist yet. It, it, well, it does exist. It's just experimental code. And so that's the reason I'm showing you the pragma syntax above it, because you'll get at least a warning when you start to use this saying that it's experimental code. Now, the downside of using experimental code is that the syntax could change. So we're really early on to be able to see what it's going to look like to be able to take the database that you've configured inside Aspire and push it into Azure. But this gives you a starting point to be able to see where you're going, as well as to be able to comment back as a community member to influence the direction of the publish process. So can we take Aspire and publish by database up into Azure SQL database? Yes, we can. And this is how we would do it. What's the long term? This may very well be it if it proves to be sufficient. So what is it doing behind the scenes? 
ARM is Azure Resource Manager. That's the way we would script our infrastructure. And on top of that is another syntax called BICEPT, which simplifies it. You can think of it as a TypeScript for JSON. That's BICEPT for ARM. Okay, this is one of the things that you could do. What else can I do? Ah, oh, this is really nice. Now I can say that I want to create the local container when I debug. And I know that it's going to take a few seconds for SQL to spin up. And I know it's going to take a few seconds for SQL to run my SQL script and create my database and seed my database. Beautiful. Now, what I really want is to make sure that the next time I debug, I don't have to go through that same amount of time. And that is what with container lifetime will give me basically saying, create this container and don't create it again, just leave it. So if I stop debugging, please don't tear it down, right? That's, so that's really nice to have this persistence across debug sessions. Another thing I can do is now tell my application that consumes my database to wait for it. So what happens if I am waiting for the SQL server to load and I am waiting for the SQL data to be seeded? Well, it could mean that my clients in my debug session are already running, expecting it to be there, and I'm getting errors when I really shouldn't have errors because all I'm really doing need to do is wait for that database to be there. There are already libraries, we'll say temporary out of band libraries that are out there for you to be able to use. Great, you can do that. Just know that as we move forward into Aspire version nine, they've already previewed these capabilities coming through the main channel. So that's really nice to see this coming. It's going to really help us as we start doing sophisticated things with products like, like SQL and uh, Azure SQL. So that's really great. Finally, this is just a little piece of candy that's coming from the community. And that is to be able to point to a database project. So if you're using a SQL project, then you can point to that project that already has all of the DDL or the create scripts to build out the scheme of your application and perhaps even seed the data. That then compiles into what we call a DAC pack, D-A-C-P-A-C. -A -C. And so now I can use this other library, which is msbuild.stk.sqlproject.aspire. And that is the preview library you can use today to go ahead and add your SQL project and from its DAC pack, publish the SQL server. So that's, that's a lot of power if you think about it. A really nice contribution from the community to be able to kind of meet where lots of developers are, especially we have code first developers, but then we have database first developers. This is the database first approach being met. Okay. There's a lot coming down the line. And one of the things that I want to make sure that you at least know is in addition to SQL server, a perfect companion to it is the data API builder also fully now supported inside Aspire as a container. We'll certainly see the componentization of data API builder coming. But in the meantime, look, you can just treat it like a standard MCR container. You can, you can bind the config file itself, right? The, the same way that we bound the SQL file above and give it a reference then to SQL Server. What's beautiful about that is that now you have SQL Server, now you have data inside your SQL Server, and now you have a data API on top of it. A REST a API, a GraphQL API, whichever you want, because data API builder supports them both. So how much do we see Aspire and SQL Server as friends? Completely. And advanced developers out there already using SQL Server, wondering how, what are the pieces that connect them together? These are the ones. If you want more information, you can go to aka.ms slash dab slash Aspire. It has all of the samples that I just showed as well as a working sample to get Data API Builder working with it as well. All right, my name is Jerry Nixon and Best of luck with your Aspire adventures.